I've officially lost count of how many days this has been that I've been hunting this deer. I had decided to name this deer Shifty. Let's go. I don't know, this deer is driving me nuts, guys. He's burning me out. The adrenaline is starting to cook in. I got this freaking deer. I've officially lost count of how many days this has been that I've been hunting this deer. I finally decided. I've never hunted a deer like this continuously because I've never had cameras up year round. So this is the first time I have had this deer in September. Um, actually August, September. Little in October. I didn't see him at all in November. So he must have been out running and now he's back. I was on the way to work again yesterday. 7.30. Beautiful shooting light. Guess who shows up in front of my blind? So I had decided to name this deer Shifty because he knows my shift schedule and because he's elusive and he's shifty as hell. It's hot, I doubt he'll show up, but I can't not go sit anymore because uh, the last time I said, nah, it's kind of warm and I'm not gonna sit, he showed up at 5.30. So Spike McGee is in there right now. It's a spike that just won't leave me alone. He follows me around everywhere. I've seen him almost every time I've sat. So he's in there just meandering around. So we've got a couple more days of this warm weather and then this cold front is supposed to come like an Arctic blast as they call it. In Florida, it doesn't get below 30 very much at all, if ever. And it's supposed to be three days in the 20s, which is freezing. We're gonna go continue this chase for Shifty. Let's go. I ran him off coming in here. He is off, got in, did my thing, set up everything, put the camera up. Here he comes again. I'm telling you, he's my he's my butt. You see he's got that cool little kicker coming off his left side? It'll be interesting to see what he turns into next year or the year after and so on, so. Nothing else going on but the cows and the donkey screaming behind me. I think the trick is, if I'm not sitting here, then he'll come out. Maybe it's the camera, I don't know. Well, all the nights I've gotten this deer on camera, it was like 5.30, it's 5.29 when this guy decides that he needs to come out here and beat around on this tractor apparently. I guess this is a prime time to be doing that. It's just one of them things you gotta deal with when you're hunting, kind of the, like I said, the suburban-ish farm type deer here. It's not gonna booger him up or get him out of here, but I doubt he's gonna show himself with this guy like, 100 yards behind me beating all around so we'll uh probably pack it up a little bit early tonight slip out of here hit it again in the morning hopefully this guy doesn't like getting up early
sucks. I would have liked to have shot him. He just appeared like they often do. He came up to my left, so I got all the netting up on the blind on the left. He got, he was like 35 yards. He finally got broadside, clicked the safety off. I got on the camera, I had to lean over, and by the time I leaned over and got on him, he had moved again. And then he hauled ass over here, and then he ran those two bucks off. And then this little broken off spike showed up. So it was a day of spikes and coyotes, apparently. It was 26 this morning. That's why I did not turn the camera on to talk to you this morning, because it was too damn cold. What are you going to do, right? So I thought there'd be way more deer activity, but um, it's going to stay cold for like a week, so we got time. I'm going to hop out and go warm up. All right, y'all. So I've been playing cat and mouse with this deer, and we had a Christmas party at the house. As you can see, the Christmas lights are on the house here. So Santa came by. Kendall K got to see Santa, and I was like, you know what? It's already kind of late, so I came over, started a bonfire back here, and I was thinking, you know, maybe I should have went and sat. It's cool out, but then I thought to myself, well, maybe I have time, and I didn't. I talked myself out of it, and my phone just went off. And of course, my shooter's in there. 5.30, plenty of light. It would have been great footage. Nice easy shot. He was 20 yards in front of the ground blind. It's harder to get it done, guys, when you have the choice not to go because you live here. Most of the time when I hunt, I go other places and we're there, I hunt. Like I get hardcore because we're there. Like I'm only there for so long, I gotta do it. And then here, it's easy to talk yourself out. If it doesn't happen in the morning, I'll be there in the afternoon. And I'm gonna sit every hunt I can until I get this deer down. This morning, beautiful, beautiful weather. I saw the broken horn spike in here and that was it. I don't know, this deer is driving me nuts, guys. He's more of a morning buck for sure. Uh, the problem I have is with my shift schedule, I have to be at work at eight, so I can't hunt that morning and then I don't get off till the following day at eight, so I can't slip out there. It's too late by then. Usually he's here at 7.30. He was here at 8.30 yesterday by the time I clocked out and got over here there's a chance of pushing him out so unless he switches to nighttime or I just finally luck up and catch him in the morning it's gonna be tough he's burning me out we hunted for almost a month in the Midwest and then I came back and I've been hunting pretty hard and um, I got that one nice buck my first Florida buck finally at least that was a that was a good day but uh, I really want to try to make it happen with this guy so I'm gonna take a break recharge the batteries and give it a couple days we got some warmer temperatures coming back. I thought maybe that would be a bad thing, but I don't think it matters. This deer, you think these cool mornings, 30 degrees out this morning, it was 28 the other day, nothing, barely any deer movement. So maybe they like it warmer here in Florida. So we'll be back. We're going to make it happen. I still got to the end of January. It's December 27th. So, Well, guys, it happened. It happened tonight. I got the dreaded text that all us hunters don't want to get. It was a picture of a guy with a deer and it said, this isn't your deer, is it? As soon as you read that, even if you don't know, I didn't even look at it yet. My heart just sank. I had this, this pit in my stomach. The deer looks really, really close to the deer I've been chasing. I don't think it's shifty. I don't know for sure. There's a lot of coincidence. The guy supposedly does hunt close to where I'm at. Certain landmarks that uh, the guy gave are really close to where I'm at. He even had a picture of a six point that he took before he shot this deer. And shifty runs around with a six point. So we're just gonna sit tight and I am going to say a little prayer that he shows back up on camera tonight. Um, it's part of hunting guys, it sucks. I'm hoping it's not true. So uh, we'll see what happens tonight. I probably won't sleep good at night. Stay tuned. All right y'all, so after uh, a somewhat sleepless night, um, going over everything in my head and how I could have done differently and actually got to shoot that deer, lo and behold, it was not shifty. My camera went off and there he was. Thank God, thank God it was not him. But <laughs> like all the negative things in my mind are going through and replaying what I should have done. So he's still there, dodged a bullet. We're gonna keep after him. All right, y'all. So at this point, I have been chasing this deer for almost a month now. And he, again, lives up to his name, Shifty, because he's always showing up when I'm on shift. The neighbor, uh, we hay a little bit and he's got a, another piece that kind of butts up to where I'm at. So I just pulled up here. Um, I'm going to hop out and see if we can talk to him and uh, get permission to go ahead and uh, go back there and set up some stands and some cameras. So fingers crossed.
All right, so that went well. I got permission, so we're gonna go uh, throw some cameras up, take an inventory of what's over here. Okay, so if you have watched our channel, uh, if you've seen any of the hay videos, I was actually haying this pasture right here behind me. Where I'm hunting is on the backside over this way. That far area on the backside, super overgrown. Four years ago, I hung a camera up back there and I got a picture of a giant deer. It's so overgrown now that the deer can just move freely through there and they can just hunker down in here. They've got water, they've got some feed here from these horse troughs. There's like these little, uh, see this little concrete thing right here? So that's water. So the deer can get water all the time from these horse pastures. So it can make it super difficult to pattern because they can literally go wherever they want. And there's always some type of water for sure. Uh, the food, if they're feeding horses and the feed falls down, then they have food all the time. So there's not a lot of browse because we had four days in the 20s, which is rare for Florida, and it killed everything. So they should be coming to feed more, but you never know. So let's go hang this camera and see if we can maybe get some more shots of him. So, believe it or not, like I said, we used to hate this. Look how thick it is. All right. Let me turn around and show you what I just walked up on. Rub central in here this is the most deer feeling area I've ever been in look at this how thick it is so much cover for them this is a big block of 60 acres and the trails let me show you the trails It is just, if this doesn't scream big buck, I don't know what does. It's a couple trees. This one's too close. It's right on top of them. There's a tree over here. I can get a 30 yard shot out to this opening. So if they come out of here, they might go right, straight or left. I can catch them coming out at least, maybe get a shot. Cause there's really no other trees. I'm on the fence line here, so I can't go any further back in the woods. So we're gonna hang camp first. I have lack of options. It's so thick, I need to mow it essentially to get a good shot. So what I did was improvise. I'll show you. I did this in Kansas and it worked. Essentially, I'll do this, latch it. And then once it's latched and on, I'll pull all this and it's pretty camouflaged because I'm right on the trail, guys. There's no other place to put it. I'm gonna have to bring a post in here, but it was such a long walk. I'd have to go to the house. I don't wanna be in here more than I have to be. The next thing is gonna be <laughs> getting a trail in here. I may have to bring the bush hog over here one of these days, but. This would be great. I can see what deer are here. If the same ones are getting over there or if there's more bucks that are just hanging in here, coming out, looking around and coming back in. So let's go ahead and see, uh, turn it on and then we'll see what we get. All right, y'all. So I threw up the camera the other day and lo and behold, who shows up on it right away is Shifty. He was at my blind the other day when I couldn't be here, of course. So when he left there, it was about 5.30, he was over here about six. I've since then gotten three or four different pictures of him coming and going. So I'm pretty sure I've narrowed down this is his bedroom. So I drove the truck up in here. It is thick to say the least. So you can see how bad this is. I would have had to have bushwhacked in here with a machete or something. So, but I wanted to make it easier to find in the dark. It's essentially, this was a hay field we did years ago. So it's a nice field if all this crap went here got one tree so i can go ahead and get this lock on hung up this tree right here has plenty of cover camera's over here about 30 yards so it'll give me a 30 40 yard shot over to where he's coming in out so let's get it hung up and then we're going to come back in here and see if we can't finally connect with shifty i knew i liked this tree got a lot of good natural cover there's a lot of big branches the cool thing was i had four sticks i only used two and I use all the rest of the branches to get all the way up. We're gonna go ahead and come back in here tonight. I don't care. I made a bunch of ragging here, but I don't think this deer really cares. I did the same thing over the blind. He was there that night when I didn't go. So we're gonna go and try this new spot, get up in the tree, uh, change up my angle a little bit, kind of get uh, claustrophobic in that blind after so long. So let's do it. Well, it's been overcast all day. And as soon as I get up here, the sun came out and it's directly in my face, but there's a cloud. As you can see, you can kind of see me now. I'm not being blinded by the sun. The only reason I came inside over here is because this deer is, it, he seems to be coming in right before dark. So I figured the sun will be down enough to where I'll be able to see fine. I won't be highlighted up here in this tree by the sun because we had four days of 20 degrees here and it killed everything. I mean, there, it, I've never seen the leaves this bare before. The wind is swirling all over. It's blowing back into the bedding area a little bit, not a whole lot, but I got a picture of him leaving. I haven't got any pictures of him coming back. So either he came in a different way 
or he came. He's not, he hasn't come back yet. He's still out. Hopefully he eases in here right before dark. Gives me my shot. This is like the, this has got to be the 20th sit I've had for this deer, at least. In true shifty fashion, the past two mornings, going to the station, I get there, he shows up. Yesterday morning, leaving the station, he is on camera. Two days in a row. This deer has never showed up three mornings in a row, ever. I'm going in there this morning. We got a frost. Uh, I'm hoping my luck will finally change on this guy and he will actually be on his feet three days in a row. I don't, this is the 30th plus hunt, uh, you know, so we only have a week left to season about. So we're uh, getting close to the end, guys. Will he show up three days in a row? He's never done it before. Well, I am uh, hoping for a miracle here. Let's go hop in the stand and see. You never know. He's hurt, he's hurt, he's hurt. Go down. Go down, go down, go down. Oh my god. Holy crap. Oh. Oh god. Guys, that is shifty. He is a morning deer, for sure. Every shift morning going to work, he's here. Every time I leave the station, he's here. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Oh, guys, that's the, I don't even know. I don't even know what sit that was. I've been hunting that deer for months. I got pictures of that deer in August, and he was definitely the biggest one here by far that is the first time i have sat in this stand and seen that deer Whew, guys <laughs> the adrenaline is starting to cook in i have never seen one picked one one after him it feels so good to finally get it done we had to go to a funeral yesterday a fellow firefighter he uh he took his own life and it's just uh you know, guys, that's why, I got, that's why I get out here and do this, man. All the stress in the world, there's nothing that makes me feel like this. Especially after chasing this deer for so friggin' long, the payoff. Some people would argue that it stresses you out more, but it's worth it for sure. All right, y'all. So, I love my blind. 
that is a killing blind this year, but since I've been hunting it so much, it's like being in solitary confinement. I'm so glad to not have to sit in that thing anymore. All right, y'all, so it's been about an hour and a half, almost two hours. So I went to get Taylor and that took a little longer. So if you ever want to wait on a deer and you feel like you don't have the patience, just go get your wife and bring her with you because you're guaranteed gonna have to wait a little bit. She won't like that. So when I shot that other deer, the same spot, he actually didn't go very far. He's the one that ran into a tree. If you didn't see that, go watch it because he ran into a tree and snapped his horn off. Uh, yeah, literally. So, uh, but when I went to uh, start looking for him, there was buzzards circling. So as I walk up here, there are buzzards circling. I'm excited. That is a good sign. Let's go Go find him. Always a good sign. When I first came and looked at it, it was super bubbly, which means I got a good lung shot. He hopped right here somewhere. Buzzards. White belly. Is it? I knew he couldn't have came that far over this fence. 100 yards max, but it doesn't matter. Too friggin' nervous that I was gonna come over and bump him or something. Right there. Look at that for a Florida whitetail, huh? Florida girl! Shh! <laughs> uh, that deer right there has given me a fit forever. Ever. I mean, just tall, wide, good mass, beautiful Florida deer. You guys, I have been chasing this deer over 30 hunts at least. Right, Taylor? How many? Since... It's... Before forever Christ before christmas way before christmas beautiful deer beautiful deer oh yeah it was definitely way before christmas i mean his threes are this three's kind of eh, i knew that but just the mass and just he's got a cool little tiny kicker coming off the back here but i mean look at that look how heavy that deer is what a beautiful deer guys boom florida deer that broadhead did a number he was quartering more than i thought he bled like a stuffed pig beautiful thanks babe